Okay, now we've got some data and suggestion that there might be a difference between our two conditions. I'm going to plot a very simple graph and then show you how to make that graph look much better. So Excel and Calc give you a number of options for plotting graphs. You can highlight the data that you want to plot, usually just the means, for example, and then you can insert a chart. And that will do an OK job. So let's just press finish on that, and that's our finished product. Um, it's not very good. What we need to do is label the graph, change the formatting, change the axes, make sure it's ready for a scientific publication or report. And also, at the moment, this graph isn't telling us very much. It's only giving us two numbers worth of information. So um, it's taking up an awful lot of space, and it's not telling us very much information. So hopefully we'll make it a little bit more informative, but still we're going to be pretty limited with a two condition graph. This is just for demonstration. So first, we don't need this legend because there's only one color being used, so we're going to get rid of that. Uh, we don't need these horizontal lines, get rid of those. Blue is okay, but might as well make it uh, something that can be printed in black and white. So let's just change that to a mid-gray color. Let's go to change the area. Let's go for, there we go, mid-gray. That's better. Now, grays are more boring, but you don't run into the problems of maybe differences in the way the graph is presented, maybe on a screen or a projector or printed out on black and white or color, you don't know. Also, it's less susceptible to problems with people's differences in visual abilities or um, color blindness, for example. So grays are better. As long as the grays are individually distinguishable, then go for grayscale colors. So it's already looking a bit better, but it's not enough. It's not enough to have one and two on the x-axis, for, for example. So let's change the labels. So these labels are pretty meaningless, so let's change the labels. You double click on the graph. It should uh, come up. Then if you right click on the graph, go to data ranges. This may be different in Excel, but you have to find the, uh, find the buttons in your software. We've got one set of data being plotted, and at the moment it's called row 24, not very informative. Um, but the Y values are in there. That's the Y values going up on the left side of the graph. Now the category labels is what we want, so we can choose a range for those, and we can choose, choose the same range as before. And that will then change the labels to self and other, which is much more useful. Let's close that. Now let's work on the y-axis. At the moment it's just numbers, um, and those numbers aren't very informative, and there's too many decimal places at the end, so let's change the number of decimal places. Let's go to numbers remove the source format thing, which is almost always not very useful. And let's just go down to one decimal place, which is the most informative number. because so then we've got a small number of numbers on the y-axis, no unnecessary decimal places. OK, uh, I'm going to remove the area, because that you don't often see areas on scientific graphs. So let's remove the area border, the chart wall, I think it's called. It's already looking neater, cleaner. In general, minimal formatting is good. Minimal, simple, high contrast is what we're going for. So again, let's make the axes slightly more obvious. So the, the default grey colour I don't find very useful. So let's instead change that to a nice clear black. Make it a bit thicker. There we go. You can see it now. Do the same on the y-axis, make it thicker, looking better. Now this is an okay size and shape for a graph, but the text relative to the overall size is very small. So let's increase the size of the text. So we go to the x-axis properties, go to the font. Uh, I usually put bold for titles, and let's go up to something like Let's go to 14 to start with, see how that looks. Pretty good. Let's do the same on the y-axis, bold, 14. 
better. We can start to read it now. So we're nearly there for the basic formatting, but we're missing axis titles. So we've got the individual conditions, self and other, but not sure what that means. So let's um, let's create a title for the x-axis. So we're going to add now some titles to the x-axis. If you double click on the graph, right click, and then let's do insert titles. You can have as a range of options. The simplest ones are x and y. So let's say our experiment was about faces, so we can call that face identity. The y-axis is um, a number. Let's say number of errors or proportion of errors. So proportion error. There we are. And by default, it's produced a tiny font, which is not very useful. So let's let's um, right click on that, format title. Again, let's go bold and maybe slightly bigger than the other font. Now it may look like these labels are too big and too far apart on the screen. And that may be true, but remember when you print this or when you put it into a report, it's going to be shrunk down much smaller. So think about the final destination of your figure. It could be on a, a mobile phone screen, on a printed document. Think about where it's going rather than how it looks right now. Um, so we're just going to make the graph a bit bigger. We're going to move the labels to the edge just because the default spacing I think is a little bit big. We can then space out the the graph a bit more. Okay, this title is not quite in the middle, so we're going to put that title in the middle. Okay, this is looking good. We've now got much larger, easier to read titles. We've got clearer data. We've got no distracting formatting in the background. But at the moment, the graph is still just giving us two numbers, the errors for self and other. So let's add one of the measures of variability that we calculated before. Let's add the standard errors, for example. Those are usually the most useful things when you're looking at the means. The standard error tells you what's the precision of your mean. If you've got lots of data and small variability, you'll have a small standard error. So to add a standard error, you double click on the graph, click on one of the data sets, and then you can right click. There's various other ways of doing it. But let's insert Y error bars. Now this dialog comes up and it looks like you can just choose one of these really helpful options. Let's just put the standard error in um, or, or the variance. Uh, never ever do this. For some very strange reason, Excel and Calc have never been able to do error bars correctly. So never ever do this. Always calculate error bars yourself. So you use cell range. You can then select the positive and the ne negative error bar. We're going to take standard error. So we choose the, stand the range of data that we want. Um, in this software, you can mirror those data up and down. And then click Go. So there is our standard error. Now the lines are a bit narrow by default. So let's, let's make those error bars slightly more visible. I like 0.05 centimeters. That's my favorite width. And that's now it. You've got a nicely formatted graph. Everything is readable. There's nothing extra. And you're clearly showing the difference between these two conditions. As I said at the beginning, you probably wouldn't do a graph with just two conditions. But if you have only two conditions and you want to illustrate it graphically, then this is the way to go. This is a categorical graph, so there's different categories, self and other. If you had a numerical scale or a parametric manipulation, you would do a different graph. You wouldn't do a column graph like this one. In the final bit, we're just going to copy and paste this graph into some other software, for example, a Word document. Now, I almost never copy and paste directly from Excel into Word, for example, because it usually it retains a lot of the, the, the formula and the um, strange processing that goes on in Excel. So ideally, 
you want to copy and paste images and not documents or other sort of objects. And depending on your software, this will work in various ways. It might work if I copy here. I could go into my image manipulation program, and GIMP is very good and free. I can paste that. That worked very well. Excellent. And there is my graph ready as an image. So let's just do a bit of manipulation on this. I usually make my graphs 170 millimeters wide. That's the width of a page on an A4 sheet of paper. Um, we should probably have 72 resolution for black and white figures. So you can see it's quite pixelated. If you were sending this to a journal, it wouldn't be good enough. But for a printed report of a small image, that's perfectly OK. You can save this as, for example, I always I prefer a, a PNG file. That's my favorite format of image. But um, TIFF, if you're using the image for a journal or JPEG or PostScript, there's many different formats. My preferred one is PNG because that's good for the internet. And that graph is now ready to be pasted directly into your report.